Chris Van Vliet, ahead of the Legends of Wrestling event with a very special Whoa, guest. Oh, mate, I can feel excitement in the air. Oh, it's great to be in Mick uh, Kosuki. You got it, Mick Kosuki. Yeah, gaming and resort. And tomorrow, we're going to blow the roof off this building. How are you feeling, mate? Oh, you look bloody lovely. Let me give you a good licking. <laughs> Boy, he tastes like sardines. Whoa. This is incredible. Yeah, mate. Can I, I get a little wait. bit in here? Yeah, mate, I can't wait to get in. What a, what a team I've got tomorrow. I've got Buddhist Barber Beefcake, I've got the Birdman Coco Beware, and the Bushwhacker. We're going to be showing them what the old legends can do. A lot of kicking, beating people up, and then I may give them a good licking. Whoa! <laughs> How many people do you think you've licked? Oh, you let's go here, mate, mate. Give me a look. Oh, no, that's, oh. No, that's the armpit. I can't do the armpit <laughs> right here now. That's a nasty boy's gimmick. Whoa! Hey. <laughs> So tomorrow night, you're just you're just some of the legends that are part of this show. Boy, what a ca cavalcade of superstars! Yeah, boy, I can't even. I'm so excited about meeting them all again. It's like a reunion. The legends of wrestling have got them all here. What better place to come to? Way out here in the swamps. Oh, what a gaming place too. You can go out there, grab a grab an alligator, and then you can come in, spend a bit of money, and then come in the back and see legends of wrestling. There is literally a sign out here that says, "Do not feed the alligators." And there's a picture of a hamburger on it. It's a serious sign, but we're, we're like right here next to the Everglades here. Mate, feed the bushwhacker then. Oh. There you, perfect, it's perfect. Yeah, boy, this is going to be a great event, mate. And I've seen the, le the list of stars on this card. Going from the poor little bushwhacker down here, <laughs> right up to... Oh, I can't even mention them all, mate. You can re-mention them. Ke Kevin Nash, Kevin Kurt Nash, Angle, yeah, yeah. Goldberg. Boy, and the list goes on and on, mate. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. On and on and yeah. on. I was at the Hall of Fame last year when you were inducted, so congratulations. Thank you, mate. Here I am, I'm wearing the ring today. Is. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> Check that out, mateys. What? Yeah, it was great to be there, mate, on, after coming into this uh, North America in 1971 and finally getting onto the biggest plateau in uh, sports uh, entertainment, WWE Wrestling Hall of Fame. It was a long road, mate, but we made it. When you got that call, was it like, Finally, finally. Yeah, that's exactly what I said. About bloody time, mate. I said, I rang up Butch, he was down under. I'm li I live in Florida now, Clearwater Beach. I got a gym right, a right above Hogan's Beach Shop. A little plug there. Anyhow, mate, uh, I got the phone call and I called down under, right down under to New Zealand. I said, Butch, he said the same thing. It's about bloody time, mate. When you look back at the career you guys had, an incredible career, obviously capped off by being put in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Do you wish that at some point in your WWE career they had let you win the championship? Well, we had a little accident there. We, we went against the, um, the Brain Busters at a time and I had an injury. Uh, I had a, a cracked vertebrae in my neck and of course they had the belts at the time and that, that was cut off. Were you supposed to even, win the belts? I don't, I don't even know how the line was. We just started the situation with them. Anyhow, we were characters. Why yeah. do characters need to carry belts around? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like D Duggan. Why does he have the four but two, the woe, the cross eye? He got everything. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then they put the um, king of the ring on him. We were the bushwhackers. We were the sort of comedy team. You know, the card is loaded with different things. You know, girls titles, uh, character, uh, different characters or different things. And we came in in that other middle part here. We entertained them from the kids to the grandparents with a bit of ha ha and hee hee. <laughs> and when you look at the wrestling or tag team landscape right now, uh, is there anyone that sticks out for you? Mate, there's a, today Vince puts them together, a team or the WWE puts two guys together. In our era, everybody came from, uh, they were tag teams. They came in from different promotions and uh, they were already affordable tag team. And now, so there was a great line of tag teams. You know, the, the rock, there was the, the Rockers. There was uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine. Heart and Foundation, Kennedy, yeah. The Heart Foundation, Demolition. Right. Later on, the Nasty Boys came and, um, and the Road Warriors. We had just had a line of talent as tag teams. So it was a great, it was a great era and everyone was a different character. Today, you know, God bless them, they're great athletes, they've got great bodies, and they can wrestle, but the characters are missing.
Luke, do you think it's better if they, you know, for wrestling, for groups to come in as a tag team rather than go, this guy's not doing anything, this guy's not doing anything, let's put them together and make them a tag well, team? You know, it's not, our, it's not, it's not the boy's call. He, sure. Vince picks these talent, the talent out, brings them in, and then decide whether he's single or run them as a tag. You talk about the uh, comedic aspect to tag team wrestling. What do you think of New Day? New Day, well, they were pushing him right up on top here. Well, you know, they were eating up time to me. The great athletes, great talent and that, but the position they were giving them on the front of the show, and that's, to me, that's not right. You're trying to draw money, you don't put that, you feed that down into the card, you know what I mean? They were opening the, the Monday Night Raw for a few weeks, and to me, you know, I've been in the back end of a business yeah. booking territories for since 1983, apart from WWF, running the back end and putting the cards together, and to me, I wouldn't have done that, but, uh, you know, the new day, they're great. I know the guys. Yeah. They're great athletes, and they're, paid, they're doing what they're told to do. If you were booking it, what would you change about it? <laughs> You've got yeah, so no, much no, experience. No. Today, people buy tickets to see the cavalcade of superstars sure. and the and the death-defying feats. They're waiting for someone to come off a ladder, off the ceiling and hurt themselves. Back in our day, people came, bought tickets to see the baby face, the good guy beat the bad guy, because the bad guys had so much heat. Everybody wanted to get out of the chair in the arenas, come forward and get at them, you, you know what I mean? But they left it up to his opponent, the good guy, and that's where that's gone today. You know, that's when the bigger houses, the people, look at Muhammad Ali. People came, bought tickets to see him get beaten. Yeah, and, and um, that Mayweather, the mouth, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's why he gets such big things for the ratings, because someone's waiting to see him get knocked out, but he's still there. That's what draws the money. I it's guess not... we had that with The Undertaker for many years. Yeah, many years, yeah, yeah. There's, when I look at it now, the, you know the big, the big heel who's there now with Paul Heyman? Brock Lesnar. Yeah, Brock Lesnar, but they cooled him off for a while, and now they're bringing him back. But when you cool him off, and he went in the gray area, it's hard to bring him back. When he first came in, everybody, you sort of stood back and say, look at this animal, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, he'd, he'd won the title in, in the uh, UFC, and he's got a great amateur background. It goes on and on, and then they cooled him off, and now they're trying to bring him back up into the top, you know, pedestal, which they can do, yeah. and that, but... You know, we're yet to see this Sunday in the Royal Rumble yeah. building up for WrestleMania. So if you had to book WrestleMania right now, obviously Brock Lesnar is going to be a big draw. Yeah. Who would you want him to face? At the moment, I will, it's hard to say, mate. They're, they're building up, they're building up um, Roman, Reigns. Roman Reigns. But to me, they need to build him before he goes with build him and build him and build him and not whack him with uh, Brock Lesnar straight away. You know, I think that would, wouldn't do uh, justice. You know, let's let him come out into WrestleMania against a four-year-old partner, bring someone in or someone with a big name and let him get another victory. Build him up, build yeah. him up to a pedestal. You know, the, these days they start something at the start of the show and they blow it off at the end of the show. The old days, they used to build it up for maybe three pay-per-views sure. and then blow it off. So you built steam, you built steam on the animal. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, uh, they're obviously trying to sell out uh, AT&T Stadium for WrestleMania 32. Yeah, that is going to be the big one, mate. We, we the, the biggest show that I was on, and uh, and I was facing the nasty boys <laughs> and, and the um, and the Mountie, and it was Butcher Me and Hacksaw Jim Duggan was in Wembley Stadium, 94.6, 94,600. Now this one, that was the biggest one so far. Yeah. This one they're trying to do uh, to beat 104,000. That's what they've put in Texas Stadium for a country and western singer. And I, I've heard that the, uh, the owner Jones and Vince have been getting together and seeing how they're going to do it. I think that if they really want to do it, it'd be Brock versus Rock. You think they could do that? Yeah, right. the, you know, the, I know The Rock's coming back, but whether The Rock wants to work with Brock, is, <laughs> you know, last time Rock had to go out and get surgery. That's true. Yeah, and he's the hey, wh where's the big money? The movies. <laughs> Hollywood. It's true. Before we wrap things up as a Hall of Famer. Wrap it right up, mate. Let's <laughs> wrap, wrap it right <laughs> up. Oh, <boy. laughs> Sardines, wrap them up, wrap them up. Who should be in the Hall of Fame for this year, for class well, of 2016? I gotta say, there's a few people and, and one of them I drove down here today with was Brutus the Barber Beefcake and another old friend of mine is the Honky Tonk Man. Yeah. You know, I've been around there honky since 1979. You know, we, we met in Puerto Rico in the 70s. He was punk rock Wayne Ferris and he should be there. He was still the longest reigning continental champion. 
Shake, shake red and roll, baby. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, and of course, uh, snip, snip, snip. The beefcake. He, he just gave me a haircut, actually. Did he? Yeah. What do you think? Oh boy, it's pretty. Boy, bad. you made it look great. Yeah, mate. didn't he? Huh? Uh, I should get one. Whoa! You should. <laughs> Bushwhacker, Luke. It's, Thank you so it's much. It's great to be here, mate. Right. And it's great to be right, right again. Yeah, boy. <laughs> wow.